Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be evaluating this infinite sum here. It's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed times n plus 1 cubed. And now before we even dive into a solution here, I just want to say why this is really, really interesting. Well, firstly, it relates to the Basel problem, which was initially solved by Euler, and that's the sum of 1 over n squared. And he managed to prove this is pi squared over 6. Now, that's uh, one famous result and a pretty useful result. And in fact, we'll use that in evaluating this sub. But what's even more interesting is the fact that we don't know, even to this day, what the value of 1 over n cubed is, or the sum of 1 over n cubed is. Obviously, we can estimate it, but we don't know exactly what it is. We know it converges, but we don't know what it is in closed form. But we do know, for example, 1 over n to the 4 and 1 over n to the 6. But 1 over n cubed remains a mystery, and this is obviously awfully similar to 1 over n cubed. So it's quite cool how we can evaluate this, but something ever so similar we cannot. Anyway, that's enough of the kind of history or the interestingness of this problem. If you want to have a go at uh, evaluating this sum, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. But I'm going to dive right into a solution. Okay, so the result that we're going to be using, and we'll use it quite a few times in this uh, proof or solution, is that 1 over n times n plus 1 is the same as 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. So all we've really done is split this into its partial fractions. I mean, this is really a, an easy result to verify. You can just cross multiply and check that this is true. So we're going to start by this. Let me call this sum s. And we can say that, and I'll probably ignore the limits for the time being just to, to be a bit lazy. This is just going to be 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 cubed. Okay, and now just expanding this sum here, this is going to be the sum of 1 over n cubed minus 1 over n plus 1 cubed. And then if I include the, the middle two terms, that's going to be minus 3 times 1 over n squared times 1 over n plus 1 plus 3 times 1 over n times n plus 1 squared. Oops. And then all of this in a sum. Cool. So let's just keep these two terms together. This is the sum of 1 over n cubed, oh, cubed minus 1 over n plus 1 cubed. So I'll keep that there. And then I've got minus or three lots of the sum. And now we've got 1 over n squared n plus 1 minus 1 over n n plus 1 squared. So 1 over n n plus 1. And then I've got in here 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Ah, well, this is this familiar identity up here again. So, and we've also got that here. So, in fact, we can write this sum. So, this guy stays the same. Minus three lots of the sum of this thing, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, squared, like so. So, what we've showed is our sum s is equal to this sum here, which you may have an idea as to how to evaluate minus three lots of this thing here. Okay, let's continue. So I'm not really gonna to touch this first term for the time being. If, if you wanted to, you could evaluate this, but we're gonna do one big evaluation at the end. And now this thing here, uh, well, again, we can expand. So this is gonna be one over n squared plus one over n plus one squared minus two lots of one over n, one over n plus one. But this guy here is again, this thing here. So in fact, I can write that as 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, like so. Cool. So uh, we have this is just a way of evaluating our sum s. Now it turns out this is all we need to now actually work out what this is in closed form. So I've just brought the result up here. And what I've done is I've simplified this. So this first term just stays the same. And then these first two terms in this second sum I've split up. So minus three lots of the sum of one over n squared. And then this one over n plus one squared, that becomes minus three, the sum of one over n plus one squared. Then the minus three and minus two, that makes positive six. And I've just got positive six times the sum of this guy here. So I'm just breaking this down into a bunch of different sums. Cool, now we're going to evaluate each of these. Let's look at this first one here. This is 1 over n cubed minus 1 over n plus 1 cubed. This is just a method of differences sum. So if I just focus on this for the time being, if we plug in n is 1, that's going to be 1 over 1 cubed minus 1 over 2 cubed. And if I plug in n is 2, 
I get plus 1 over 2 cubed minus 1 over 3 cubed. If I plug in n is 3, that's 1 over 3 cubed minus 1 over 4 cubed, and so on. And you can see here the minus 1 over 2 cubed cancels with the plus 1 over 2 cubed. The minus 1 over 3 cubed cancels with the plus 1 over 3 cubed. Minus 1 over 3, 4 cubed cancels with the 1 over 4 cubed, and so on. And so all we're left with is this term at the start, which is just 1. So this first sum here evaluates to 1. OK, what about this thing here? Well, this thing here is minus 3 lots of the sum of 1 over n squared. That is just the Basel problem. The sum of 1 over n squared is pi squared over 6. And so if I multiply that by 3, that's just going to be minus pi squared over 2. Cool. How about this sum here? Well, this is minus 3 lots of the sum of 1 over n plus 1 squared. So it looks very similar to this. What is this sum? Well, this is just 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus blah, blah, blah. So this is just going to be pi squared over 6 minus 1. And so this is going to be minus 3 lots of pi squared over 6 minus 1. Lovely. Now how about this last term here? Well, this is just, uh, again, another method of differences sum. So if I just focus on the sum part of this, this is going to be uh, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and so on. Those terms cancel, those terms cancel, those terms cancel, and so on. And we're just left with 1. And so that's going to be just a plus 6 at the end. Now all we've got to do is simplify this. So we've got 1 minus pi squared over 2. Uh, this minus 3 times pi squared over 6 is another pi squared over 2. And I've got plus 3 plus 6. And this just simplifies to 10 minus pi squared, which of course is very, very small and positive. So this sum here, we have evaluated the value is 10 minus pi squared. A pretty neat solution, if you ask me, um, using essentially just um, this fact up here and the fact of the Basel problem. that The sum of the reciprocals of the squares is pi squared by 6. Anyway, we'll leave it there for this video. If you have enjoyed, please do give it a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.